Hi, it's Bridget. Nice to see you. I wanted to talk about being psychic and being intuitive and what that means to me as a person. There are so many different aspects to being psychic and what that looks like and what it means. And for me in my life, it's just a natural part of who I am. It's organic to me, you know? I, I have become so, I've allowed myself to become so acceptable of my psychicness just as much as I breathe. And like, it's a part of me like breathing, like I can't, I just can't stop. I can't just quit being psychic. I could quit, I could quit doing psychic work. I could stop doing sessions and stuff, but I can never stop being psychic because that's who I am. And I believe that everyone is intuitive. I believe everybody has the ability to connect if they choose to with spirit. The most important relationship that you have, however, though, is your, with your own spirit. And that's very true. That's been very true for my path as a psychic because it's been a process to really learn to trust myself and to be okay with my biggest thing because I come from a, a very success-driven oriented background. Like when I was young, I decided that I was going to go to college and I was gonna make something of myself and I was the one in my family that was most likely to be a senator. I was very passionate about public service. I loved politics and government back in the day. That was like the 90s, okay, 80s and 90s, you guys. And I did go to school and get my, my um, a couple of my bachelor's degrees are in political science and urban and regional studies. So I decided instead of going into politics to go into government, to be in public service. So I did that and I had a, a wonderful career for 10 years. I worked in human resources. I did a lot of different things. I've worked in organizational development and learning at a large county organization. Um, I've also worked in city government. I've worked in you know zoning and code enforcement, inspection. Um, home area. I have also worked in um, contracts and um, ordinances, law kind of stuff like the, um, um, you know, being part of uh, board meetings and committee meetings and all that kind of stuff. I've written policies and just all sorts of stuff, you know, I, a lot of variety. But so I have that background and my mind was always driven to be successful. And to me, success meant a good career where I made great money, had good benefits and could provide for my family um, comfortably. I never necessarily set my sights to be rich in my life, but I didn't want to be poor. I didn't want to have poverty. I didn't want to have money be something that would hold me back. And so I felt like very early on in my life that education was the way that I could make sure that didn't happen for me, that I could make sure that I could um, take care of myself and my family. So that is what worked for me. What works for other people is what works for other people. But that was my big thing. That was my like steady security thing. And so when um, life happened and um, I had my first baby, my first of my four. Um, about a year later, that was when my dad was diagnosed with HIV AIDS, actually full-blown AIDS. He went into the hospital and he didn't come out. Um, and I mean, it was way too late, you know, for my dad. It's not too late for other people. People can live long lives, good quality of lives with HIV AIDS, but um, it was, it was way too far for him. And when that happened, my daughter was a year and a half and I was pregnant with my second baby at that time. So I had a huge, lots of life changing things happen. So I just, I had a baby, my first baby, then I was pregnant with my second baby. And then my dad has this, you know, horrific disease and that is like torturous disease and I mean, it's so mean. I mean, it's so intense and, oh man, that was awful to watch that. And, and then he dies and I was really close to my dad. My dad was the one that took me on my first field trip to the state capitol. My dad was the one that rode a bus all night to march for women's rights in Washington, DC when I was in like high school or early college. I can't remember what age I was exactly, but um, my dad was super politically active and then my mom got politically active. My parents were just advocates. You know, very strong feminists, my dad as well. And um, so I was raised in that environment. So that's part of my nature, I think. 
or my nurturing, maybe my upbringing. <clears throat> but I, of course, chose to be born into that family. So I clearly have an advocate, advocacy spirit anyway, <laughs> like a warrior stand up, right? So now as a psychic, I'm standing up for your intuition. For, and your intuition is really your spirit. We all have spirit. We have our physical bodies and we have our spiritual bodies, which are one and the same. Is that weird to say that? So I know there's layers. So the physical body is the vessel, the physical tangible vessel that you can touch that gets to wear the clothes and that has the microphone, right? And the earrings and such. But the spirit being is within you. Your spirit is within you. It literally is inside of this beautiful temple. It's in your belly. Um, if you have to pick a spot in your body, it's like this body is a temple and inside the temple is this light and this light is your soul, your spirit. And it's even a chakra. It's, it's the name a solar plexus is what's given to it spiritually. Solar plexus chakra. And when you leave your body, your spirit leaves the body. But when you're a human, you have your spirit in your body. So you're always a spirit. So whether you have a body or don't have a body, your spirit's always with you. So it's not to be a person and then blow off being a spirit. Forget about that. That's a whole beautiful resource, access, encouragement, courage, confidence that you have. A beautiful relationship with your truest source self is your soul, your spirit, your intuition. And so I'm such an advocate for do-it-yourself psychic. And for me, I wanted to use the term psychic specifically, even though it does refer to forecasting or predicting the future, which I really believe you create your future. Um, I, I really strongly believe you create your future. And so I try not to do psychic sessions where I predict people's future. I'll say, well, here's the options. Here's, how it, here's what's showing up for you based upon what your soul is telling me because I can hear your spirit. Remember, I talked to spirit whether it has a body or it doesn't have a body. And that's what I do. I'm really good at that. That's what makes me the psychic as like a profession because that's what I do. I channel your spirit, your soul inside your body, inside you. So that's how I know what I know because you tell me, you share it with me. And so I just share it with you and that's why it feels familiar. How do you know that? Oh, that's exactly how I feel because you're telling me and you deserve, you deserve to have access to that wisdom, that infinite knowledge and i think that part of what we're so afraid of as people and what keeps us from our intuition or accessing our spirit is because we think that that's so powerful that would be way too big for us to handle like if we really knew how much powerful manifestation creation energy we have inside of each of us our soul is capable of that life manifesting energy that it would could change everything externally and that it feels like such a contrast, it feels so dramatic that we don't want that. We want gradual, gentle change. But I, I'm here to encourage you, however, to make sure that you are nurturing that relationship with your soul, your spirit, because that is the most important thing, is that relationship with yourself, your spirit. So being psychic to me really took building a relationship with my spirit and I am not perfect in any relationship we have our good days and we have our fights I do not listen to my spirit my healing team like my angels my spirit guides my helpers and other uh, spirit people in a session would probably tell you I'm kind of laughing because I'm thinking of a couple of spirit guides that I know that are well-known famous people that would tell you probably tell you yeah Bridget does not listen so being psychic doesn't mean knowing everything and it doesn't mean being perfect far from it this is not perfect and I intentionally share with you at on my channels real life like I'm a real human person I am a psychic soccer mom I mean I am like this week it's going to be crazy with soccer tournaments and stuff and I'm taking my kids to swimming lessons and I'm paying the bills and I'm cleaning the house and I I mean like everybody else, I'm doing all, I'm, you know, reading stuff on Facebook and going to birthday parties for my family. I mean, all sorts of stuff, right? Real life stuff. I take it out the garbage. Well, actually, I don't take out the garbage. I sometimes bring it up. My husband usually takes it out because that's like his thing, you know, because, you know, kind of packing in there a certain way because we got four, four kids and two of us. And so there's six people. So yeah, anyway, product be really efficient, you know, and so real life I share that with you but I also think it's so important especially at above life channel 
on YouTube to share with you that psychics aren't perfect. So when I do a channel session and I say something wrong, I get a date wrong, I get a middle name wrong, I get however many kids the person has wrong, fine. I've shared that because that's real. Like, I'm not going to always be accurate or right. That's not my job isn't to be right all the time. That's not what psychic means. Psychic doesn't mean right all the time. It doesn't. But it means willing to connect and to have the experience to make me a better person. And I want to increase. I want to increase my uh, skill level and the ability to communicate and connect. And the only way I'm going to do that is to have the experiences. And I'm sharing it with you. I'm sharing it with you because that's how you do it. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Olympic athletes, Olympic runners and sprinters didn't start out the moment they were born running like an athlete. They did so many different things along the way to give them the experiences that they have, the practices that they have to really be successful. And they couldn't walk for uh, probably a year or two, a year and a half, right? A year, right around there. So. It's the same. You got to give yourself that time and the experiences in order to be able to really build that relationship with your soul, with your spirit, with your intuition. So, and I have a hard time with that too. I like to be accurate. Accuracy is very important to me. I'm a bit of a perf perfectionist. And so if I get a detail wrong, I'm really hard on myself. But I'm working on that because that's part of being a person is allowing yourself to forgive yourself if you're not perfect because the point isn't perfection. That's not the goal is not perfection, but we feel like it is, you know, we really feel like it is, but it's not, it's the experience. And so the process is what I'm sharing with you. So you, I hope can be inspired by that and realistic, get realistic, you know, a psychic, if you go to a psychic, yes, it can be super helpful to you, but it's not, everything is not perfect and right on exactly the way that they say it's going to be because you are a, a dynamic manifester and you are constantly as an energy being, creating, shifting, changing, and growing. And so you have more access to more possibilities. So just because someone says, hey, these are the four things I, or three things I see for you, it doesn't mean those are the only things, or it doesn't mean you're gonna choose one of those paths. You still have choice. And you are the one that's the expert of yourself. So you have to use discernment. You really have to feel what feels right for you and make your own choices. I mean, psychics can give you some additional input and some clarity and that's great, but they, they don't, we don't tell you what to do. You tell you what to do. You decide to make empowered, healthy life choices. That's what having psychic session, at least from my perspective, that's what, that's what I believe. Those are my values as a psychic. I think it's important for you to know that and to understand that, that that's what you're getting when you watch Above Life channel on YouTube, when you watch Fairy Grasshopper channel on YouTube, when you follow the Purple Medium on Facebook, that's what you get. And so um, I hope that that's helpful for you to really see that, to see real life of psychic people. You know, I know it's easy to watch um, reality TV and stuff and think, oh, that's how it is. And it's like, no, that's edited. <laughs> it's set up too sometimes, you know, like I don't oftentimes walk into a Walmart and start talking to the deli lady and go, oh, your dead mother is here. I, I just not, that's just not something that just comes up in casual conversation or I'm on the soccer sideline and I'm like, oh, hey, did your brother just die? I mean, that's not what happens. <laughs> not, in my, not in my life. <laughs> so, I mean... That's just not how reality is for me. And so I don't know how it is for other people. But I want to share it with you so that you can be realistic for yourself too as you are growing your intuition, as you are connecting with your spirit. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here. Have a great day.